Basically, we have R84. We have it's a trust. It's a double. Oh, I'm, I'm on here. Sorry. It's a, um, a trust on a double stud wall system, and we're going to site build the the little um, soffits out there. Um, and then we're using ICF uh, foundation, and, we'll, and we've got pictures of them installed later here. And they wanted a uh, stone veneer on the uh, on the uh, building, and. and we used this uh, stone veneer to act as a, to, we took advantage of it and turned it into a very thin stone veneer um, and added, let our rocks, uh, our rocks sort of slide on through to help this thing and bridge right here so we can get some insulation uh, on the outside of that. So, let me zoom in here. What do we want to look at? So, it is, so we've got, this is a vented uh, system. So, uh, the zip wall system that we have, uh, we, we have Vantec on the outside. We, in Maine, we can get 10-foot panels um, so that there's no horizontal seams in our, in our uh, panelized system. So they go in and if there's only there's the vertical. Because there's always the builders who are like, well, what's going to fail for, you know, if that tape fails, it's going to fail from the top and it's going to buck the water right into the seams, which is where, you know, you have problems. So, you know, you can Google that and, let, you know, see the online argument um, uh, point of it. Um, so we have a plywood gusset across the top. And that connects to um, a sheet, and we're sheeting the underside of the trusses. Um, and we're doing that just so that we can have this, um, this air sealing, and we can um, you know, uh, do a blow door test um, uh, you know, before the sheet lock goes in, and we'll pretty much know what our number is um, at that point, whether we've made it or not, and we're going to chase that around. Um, and so we are, we are a vented uh, truss roof here. So here, here's our floor system. So we have a taper top ICF course, um, and then uh, the pressure treated sill, or we're using a timber sill, which is a uh, you know, non-toxic uh, treatment. Um, this outside wide, if you will, of the stud comes all the way down there, some plate that's bolted in, and then our, our um, uh, eye joists uh, rest on it, and nail that tenaciously, and seal our rim board with, uh, this is the only use of spray foam on the on the whole job, and that's just really to seal this box really well. We're adding a layer. This, when we first started, we were, as, as Roger indicated, we were thinking radiant slab, but um, Mark and I were of the opinion that that is probably overkill in terms of hardware and um, uh, for, you know, if the whole goal is to reduce the, the amount of equipment needed to heat or cool the building, then, um, you know, by, you know, investing that in the envelope instead. And reduce the heat demand and it might become oversized. So, uh, is that the foundation? I was sweating over. I was sweating over the same detail about um, the, the thermal break. And there's all this thermal mass in your wall, right? That's in the um, uh, the ICF foundation wall, and it all bears onto the, um, the the ground. And so it sort of short, it creates this shortcut. It kind of reduces the performance of all the insulation that you put on the outside just because it's thermal mass. So I really want, so I, in talking with my engineer, I thought, well, let's sneak in a piece of, uh, you know, high density uh, uh, XDS uh, at, the, you know, at the base of this thing. Can't we do that? We can bear on that. Can we do that commercially all the time? Sure. So we did it. And so these dowels, and we'll see, I think we have that in the construction detail the pictures. Of, so now we have epoxy dowels that, that penetrate that, just because that could be a water infiltration spot. So we create this thermal break between the footing and the foundation wall. Um, and then we have our interior drains, and these also act as our radar vents. Oh, and one, one thing that we also have to really worry about in Maine is radon. It's, it's no joke up there. It's um, uh, a big deal, even though their site's probably pretty good for it. But uh, So we have a, a capital break across the top of this, and we're actually sealing the, um, uh, the vapor barrier of the slab down to it and, and also uh, you know, wrapping it around here so that we can have this and so we have a continuous seal uh, for our vapor into the uh, building and that's for radon as well. Um, this is a building section. You'll, saw, you'll see that there's sort of like a, a larger space, very, very large windows here uh, that jumps up. So we've got trusses on one side and a funny shaped truss on the other side. Um, here's our basin, uh, skate well. Uh, let's see. Ah, so let's build it. And you're on. So, um, 
major challenges so far. Uh, and where we are right now, we're under roof, uh, as in tech sheathing. So walls are up and the roof is up, but that's uh, kind of where we are. Setback restrictions, as Chris indicated. We had uh, the challenges on the south side facing the river and on the, on, the, uh, on the east side. I worked with the city of Saco and they, uh, they were very flexible. We ended up horse trading some of our land for some of their land. Uh, so that uh, about 200 square feet, um, and that allowed us to move the house away from those slopes. And they also uh, were flexible on the interpretation on zoning uh, setbacks. Um, also, uh, seeing red on green appraisals. I don't, um, you know, most people when they build a, um, build a house have to borrow money to do that, which means you've got to go to a bank, which means you've got to get, the bank is going to want to have an appraisal. Uh, I knew that, uh, so we're financing a house through a bank, I knew that we had to get an appraisal. So here's the punchline. Uh, it ain't easy. It ain't easy at all because, frankly, even those those appraisals, and I'm talking about a sample size of three. We had three appraisals for our property. The first one, had, they all had professed to have green uh, credentials. The first one, uh, for the, after waiting for about a month, decided no thanks, which in retrospect was the right answer. The second guy said, "Oh, I've done lead properties before, and on the appraisal form, he valued zero for the energy efficiency on our home. Zero. So when I saw that, I went ballistic. Uh, and I went to the bank, and they agreed with me. The bank was being extremely supportive of this. So um, I found on the American, Inst the Institute of Ameri AIA, American Institute of Architects uh, website. Here's some guys that, uh, so I picked a guy, and I suggested to the, uh, to the bank, and they said, not our list, but you know, he's got great credentials. He's a retired president of the uh, main chapter of AIA. And um, so anyways, bottom line is, at the end, he valued our house. He gave us credit for being net zero for seven years, period. Why seven years? Uh, because he said that that's the length of the typical American mortgage. What's our home have to do with a mortgage? So, you know, we went back and forth and uh, on the one hand, he said, okay, I'll give you 15 years, but then he tweaked the numbers to basically get us back to seven years. So my point is, <laughs> this is really uh, no ticky, no laundry. I have met, uh, through my blog, uh, a whole number of people who wanted to do more green things, not necessarily to the level we're doing, but wanted to do, they wanted to go triple pane versus double pane windows, thicker walls, more insulation. They couldn't afford it because the appraiser simply didn't place any value on that. Um, so, I mean, to me, this is a huge problem if we are truly serious about building more energy efficient homes. Uh, picking windows is not easy. Um, you know, I thought, I thought I was pretty well informed about all this stuff. And uh, I read a lot of articles, and I went into this assuming that, gee, if I pick any high quality, reputable triple pane window that has higher SHGC, you're good to go. Not. Um, Unfortunately, you're, we're pretty much stuck with going with uh, European windows to not only get the really ultra-high SHGC, but there's that unknown factor called the size of the mullions, which is not a, a published, you know, um, we started with, uh, well, we started with Pella, wasn't even close. Then we went to, we, we, we tried several other windows. My point is, picking windows is not intuitively obvious, uh, particularly to those that aren't versed in, in all the minutia what I call the three decimal place accuracy of performance, windows, window performance. And uh, it ain't cheap going green. Despite with, uh, what I hear, uh, we're paying the bills and you know, this is a lot more expensive than we thought it would be. So, uh, so what, I, uh, what I plan to do now is uh, to show you some pictures. And uh, you know, I love watching this old house. Uh, both Lynn and I like to watch uh, this old house, and we like to watch, I like to watch Norm Abrams and the Yankee Workshop. But you know, when these guys do something, there's never any problems. <laughs> Norm cuts uh, a piece of wood and puts it in, it's a perfect fit. Well, <laughs> it ain't so. <laughs> so, um, so I'm going to talk to you about some of the features we put in and some of what I call the oops. So we've, we've been very focused on uh, thermal brakes. Uh, the picture on the left is uh, the high density XPS being installed uh, between the footer and the uh, foundation and the holes there are, were drilled as a guide to put rebar in. We were using a nine and a half foot, uh, almost 10 foot, no, they were about 12 foot long rebar. 
We've uh, put the foam under the uh, anything on the snow. Uh, we wrestle with uh, putting uh, thermal brakes under the support columns, and we've got the double layer of, uh, of a sill seal there. 